The second chapter of To Banquet with the Worthy Ethiopians, a memoir of life before the alphabet, uh, takes place uh, in a hospital. Uh, you heard in the first chapter some references to the heart storm. And uh, this takes place at another barrier between myth and time. Uh, it's a barrier uh, that the protagonist has crossed entering and following a heart surgery. Um, and the poem begins in the hospital uh, where uh, the protagonist um, sees uh, incarnations of Achilles and Odysseus and Agamemnon as he did at the summer camp. Um, and the chapter is called Chirograph which has two meanings. Uh, one, it's uh, the chirography is simply the world of print, the world that we live in, the world of uh, uh, literacy. Um, and also a chirograph is a medieval uh, document that is torn in two with writing on both sides so that two parties come together and seal the chirograph as a, as a way of uh, demonstrating authenticity. And the epigraph to this chapter is from Dr. K.B. Sanders who said, Homer knew where the major organs were, but he didn't know what their function was. Floodlit beneath a stainless firmament anointed with iodine and rendered unto a pride of paper-helmeted gods. My breastbone is parted, heart unsheathed, and everything unredressed is clarified in blood so it can seem Odysseus parts the surf, naked, brined, no syntax in his step, forward a thrust in heel, just all in now. Then, under dome stars, time enfolds again, and I wake quilled with needles, swathed in, in sweat-soaked cloth. My wound begins to blossom, and I strain to uncuff and probe beneath the gown. I die, I think. It could be a child's fingers trace the livid slash a cave figure or totem. It could be my stitched chest is a chirograph, metastasizing into memoir. Thus my body transcribed rocks, backward washed clean of birth, forward into days charted by lines, backward like a wave or a half rhyme, and forward into the summer of 265 when I first bent solemn to the page. Master of mimicry, librarian of jokes, magician who disrobed the queen of hearts, Odysseus was thick as a fire plug, sprouting waves of hair from every cranny. As Reveille blared, he shambled bear-like into the pine cabin and the runts at mock attention exchanged smirks. He sallied from untucked sheets to untied shoes, wagging his ass. You, fearless, he hooked the boy's shorts. How about a spin around the world? Nose to humid nose, the hero leered, his underhand torquing elastic, fearless back arched. Uncle, he fluted, and as the ungendered voice box climbed a tenth, it thinned to Ithaca, at least to me. Ringed in 265 by a squad of pups, I fantasized this Homeric, forever 12 years old and shrilling home. Knowing this, the camp counselor Odysseus, himself shipwrecked in time, had named us all. Winkles, Parboil, Roto-Rooter, Bam-Bam, Floss, based on our gear, and the name stuck. Odysseus licked his lips, snapped fearless free. Cleaving the bruised dawn of 265, my chirograph unseals. One lip oozes blood-flecked dactyls. One's dumb. Thus, parting the curtain of intensive care, Odysseus moons, spanks his heart tattoo. 
magisterial, flanked by his entourage, the chief heart surgeon, Agamemnon, enters the bruised light. Marble eyes survey the gleaming steel and tile, scan blips cascading down a screen. With talismanic stethoscope he bends, and I peer into the deathless countenance. Outside the shaded window in the world parenthesized by moon and cup, everyone knows Schliemann's golden mask. He's the unctuous provost, the officious clerk, the platinum glaze of the highway patrolman shades. But having dipped sterile hands into my chest as if it were a sacrificial bowl, Agamemnon is present as a force, just as he was the summer of 265. In that far summer sown into my list, Agamemnon loved camp life. He loved the beach and bottle-sharded asphalt, the creaking seesaw and the monkey bars. The squire's camp was a divinity in whose clay heart nothing's bent or twisted, and all was his, firstborn of the camp's owner. Under the command of Agamemnon, the day was seized parsed to periods, thrusting, no healing back, marshalling hours into weeks and months, Homer skips in Rouse's plain English. The only respite to worm deep in bed or woods or corner of a field and rub the gashed and pasted over paperback cover with its sightless bust, then thumb through phalanx paragraphs, always returning to the dog-eared page where Thersites rocks and chants before the army let us all be whole, be one, let us all sail home. To make me whole and sail me back into time, they gather round my bed, my wife and friends, weaving the tale of the day I was unsheathed. Gorgons they saw, and goddesses and fiends, and all this on the waiting room TV. One face I think they never glimpsed the day I lived through the years Homer forgot. It appears in morphine twilight, in the eons in between the monitor's blip, in between the impossible push to rock forward and the infinitesimal collapse into the shroud, when pain gags and the instrument dials spin and the pulse at the nape of my neck throbs black. It is the unsheathed face of death-dealing Achilles. Gaunt as the new moon's beak, his visage gleams, just as it did first night in 265, after the station wagons had set sail and the cicadas had let loose their terrible screech and shadows tensed to snakes and tarantulas and each boy found his stripling heart palpitating wildly out of time. At the edge of a strip of woods, the hero lowered, mantled in a dark, no flashlight pierced. Like shards to a magnet, so we closed to circle him, the champion Achilles. Reaching into his camouflage fatigues, he unsheathed the long, bone-handled knife, twice notched, arabesqued with script. I'm going back, he peered into the woods. Find me and you can have the knife. He stroked the beveled flank and set his thumb on the serrated teeth, then cocked his arm and flung the weapon deep into the night. And so it arcs through time to pierce the heart. Agamemnon bared and Odysseus slapped to life. It's sunk in earth or flesh. Its chirograph cleaves the howling myrmidons who chased from the boy who stayed, watching the blade soar into a darkness bruised with flashlight beams.